All right, so today we're gonna ask the question of can you run a 100 amp hour battery with a 280 amp hour battery or a 304 amp hour battery? And the question really becomes, is yeah, you can, but should you? And we're gonna go through all the ups and downs, talk about all the risk, and we're gonna come up with an answer. I wanna go over why people would be mixing sizes. And I, I get this all the time as people say, well, why not just build the whole system with all the right stuff? Most of us are building our system a little at a time. We add a battery here, we add a battery there. I even did it with the RV. I built it with three uh, EG4 batteries, and then I went back and built a DIY battery. So that's not a, really a fair question because not everybody can afford to build the system right off the bat, right out of the gate. And so that's, that's, that's why. With these budget constraints, it's building their system slow, people want to use the batteries they have. That means they're gonna be using some older batteries and some newer batteries. You've gotta remember these lithium iron phosphate batteries are going to be around for years and years. So they're wanting to use the batteries they bought three, four years ago that are still working perfectly. And they wanna use the new batteries that they're building today. And as we get further and further from the beginning and the creation of these batteries to the end of the, these batteries, these batteries are going to get bigger. They're gonna change. So the question still remains, can we use them together? Because going back and finding all the original sized batteries is gonna be very difficult if that's what we have to do. Another big reason that people do that is they want to expand their system. They want to expand it. They want to expand it big. And the cost effective way to do that isn't to go out and buy the little batteries anymore. It's to buy the big ones. And so some people do it for that purpose. Now let's get on to problems with mixing battery sizes and talk about some of them openly. Um, voltage sag differences for the small batteries and the volt, they, they do drain a little bit faster. Now, perfectly, full disclosure here, I have 300 amp EG4 batteries in my RV. I also have a 304 amp hour DIY battery. This was one of the questions that I started off with. What can I do to make them work together and what do I have to do? So the first one is really the one that I have noticed. The EG4 batteries, are more generous with their power, they give it up a lot easier. So a lot of the times they, they, they run down a little bit more. Now, if you're just running between 180% or 160% every day, then yes, your smaller batteries are going to work harder and they're going to, they're gonna drain a little faster and they're gonna charge a little faster. Keeping in mind that that, that curve that we have is unlike lead acid batteries. We're talking specifically about uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries here and not lead acid batteries or other types of batteries. With lithium iron phosphate, the, the voltage across from, you know, the, after the first 10%, you know, from 90% to 10% is almost identical all the way across. Therefore, you don't really see this abusive behavior as predominantly shown as you would with something like a lead acid battery, where it would just destroy the smaller batteries or it would just destroy the batteries that are older or weaker or whatnot. This isn't so predominantly such a problem with, with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. At least I haven't seen it and I don't believe it is a problem. Um, imbalance in charge and discharge cycles. We kind of talked about that a little bit, but it, there, there is an imbalance. You will see that the smaller batteries, they discharge a little faster. Uh, they also are eager to take the, the charge a little faster. Usually what happens is you start approaching 100%, they start you know, slowing down their charge and the, the larger battery starts increasing its charge and it all balances out. Are they working harder? Yes, they're working harder. But you know what? If these batteries are going to last for 10, 15, 20 years, which that's what some of them are looking like they're going to do, then that's so be it. Let them work a little harder and the older batteries wear themselves out a little faster and the newer batteries will come in and replace them. As long as we can use them all together. Do we care? And then higher stress on the smaller batteries, they wear out faster. Yeah, we, we know that. That's going to be a, you know, a given. And it, I honestly don't see it as being that major of an issue, even with the, the three. In, for the most part, 
A third of the power comes from the three 100 amp hours batteries, and a third of the power comes from the 304 amp hour battery. Now, uh, so you do risk, I, and in this one I do have a little bit more, risk of the BMS shutting down. So because the batteries are working a little harder and they're a little bit more generous with their, with their, uh, with their power, um, with their giving up the energy and giving you the power, uh, oftentimes, in, if, if I'm running close to the edge at the end of the night, the EG4 batteries will shut down and the DIY battery will take over and, and run from the last, you know, 10 or 15% all by itself. And then when the sun comes up, they all turn back on and charge up together. So is it, is there some of this is legitimate? Are there some of these complaints legitimate? Yes. But is it legitimate enough to where I'm going to replace $4,000 worth of batteries that I've only used for a year? Absolutely not. Wouldn't even consider it. Um, paralleling, safe ways to do it. Uh, parallel only and only those batteries of the same exact chemistry and size. And what I mean by that is there is a difference between a 15 cell battery, a 16 cell battery, a 48 volt, a 24 volt. We know not to mix 48 and 24 volt, but you want to make sure that you're also getting the exact same number of cells and size. You want that 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 level line, that level voltage line that they run on to be the same for all the batteries. You want them to at least give them the benefit of all being within the same neighborhood and being the same type of battery. Uh, that would be it. Also, you want to make sure that in, in order to make sure this is, this is safe, fuse every battery. Don't just do the whole bank. You want to prevent large quantities of power from shifting from one battery to the other. And this brings me to the, the, the best way when you're going to connect multiple batteries is get them all to the same charge. So you'll hear people say, charge them all up to 100% before you add them to a bank. It's, it's not about getting the new battery to 100% before adding it to the bank. It's getting it to where the relative difference between the voltages of the batteries in the bank that you have versus the bank or battery that you're adding are the same. What you don't want to do is plug in a new battery that has a 100% charge to a bank that has a 10% charge and watch the inrush come from the new batteries and just flood the old batteries and, and either hurt them or damage them with that inrush. So what you want to be able to do is make sure that you charge them. If you have to go to 100% to, to, to feel like you're there, go to 100%, get all of the batteries, new and old at 100%, then turn them on. But what's most important here is that they are all the same or very close to the same relative charge and voltage when you flip them on. Is this a major issue? As long as they're all fused, I haven't seen a major issue. When I flip on my 304 battery and my, uh, my 100 amp batteries are a lesser charge, I do see an output of you know, 20, 30, 40 amps flowing from one battery to the other. So it does happen and that, rel that could be an actual position of problem if you are adding and removing batteries constantly. If you are building a bank to use for long term, to run a house, to run, to run something like that, then it shouldn't be a problem as long as you turn them on and add them to the bank at a relatively safe moment, which means they all need to be at the relative same state of charge, same voltage, that type of thing. Um, best practices for alternatives. Uh, I, I don't even like this, this chapter of the video because I'm, I'm a firm believer that these batteries are going to be here. They're going to they're gonna outlive me. And if they're going to outlive me, then I want to use them all. And I just find it ridiculous that we're talking about the fact that lithium iron phosphate batteries that are going to, that, that the chemistry is going to be around for 15 to 20, 25, 30 years, possibly. Um, I haven't seen any valid test that really shows that they're going to degrade to a point where they wouldn't be usable at some point in the future. So are we saying that entire systems of hundreds of amp hours of batteries where we're headed to all have to be purchased at the same time so that they can all be the same size and so they could all age the same way? That makes no sense. Why would we care if they age the same way? What's important is that we have enough battery bank to run ourselves in emergencies, off-grid, independence, and create that, that environment where we don't have to worry about it. So are there ways to do it? Sure. 
build all matched batteries when you when possible putting your system together put them build them all the same uh, also consider selling some of your old batteries and using them to get new batteries that's a good viable option also if you're going from uh, uh, lead acid or you're going from some other chemistry or 15 cell to seven, 16 cell batteries completely 100 percent agree don't mix them sell them find another alternative build a new battery bank that way uh, also use mismatch batteries in total separate system that's a good option also um, a lot of people have sheds that they use their batteries on and then they can use that to power like a charge verter to power the other batteries um, lots of setups like that so there's alternatives like that if you absolutely have different types of batteries that can't be mixed uh, but I, I strongly don't think that's the case with lithium iron phosphate 16 cell 48 volt systems. I think that you're, I think it's a, a pretty good way of mixing them and I have not ran into any real problems with it yet. Uh, recap, uh, mixing them works, uh, but there are some trade-offs. So the trade-offs are you're gonna wear the, the, the weaker batteries, the smaller batteries out a little bit faster. A reasonable trade-off that I think and I say that you're going to wear them out. And to be honest with you, I'm not even convinced that the reports that we've seen on the wear and tear on these batteries is even uh, remotely close at this point. Companies are still suggesting 80% depth of discharge. They promoted them as 100% depth of discharge. And then when you buy them, they say 80% to protect 80% of my capacity. So I'm not going to use 20% that, so maybe I get that 20% back over a period of 20 years. Whereas if I just use the 20%, then I'm sure I have the 20%. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand their statistics. I think it's battery companies that are promising 10-year warranties, 15-year warranties on batteries that they really don't have enough evidence. They don't want to be caught 10 years down the road holding a bunch of batteries that came up um, um, not being able to sustain what they promised. So they're, they're being cautious and careful. I honestly don't believe it's going to be a problem. There are, there's the, plenty of dissent to this, and you can find somebody that will say other, otherwise. But I personally don't believe, I don't believe these batteries are going to have that kind of problem. I think it's going to, they're going to be around for years and years to come. And, you know, 10,000 cycles on a battery uh, it, it, I get to get out the calculator here, but 10,000 cycles on a battery that cycles even every day, you're looking at 27 years of life. If, if I could run my batteries up and drain them all the way down to zero and do a cycle every day, it would be, that, that would be amazing. There's no way that's going to happen. Um, so I just don't see the, the lifespan of these batteries being anywhere near what they've got, or, or there's something that we don't know about yet, which is what I think they're gambling on also. Um, I encourage you, if, if, if you have ever connected different size batteries, put it in the comments below. Tell me what you have done, what your system is like. I do it all the time. I don't see any problems with it. Obviously, you want to take precautions, those safety precautions of only the exactly the same type of batteries. I also believe this is true for different brands. I, I don't believe that mixing different brands is a problem. I think that different brands have different types of BMSs. They have different amperage pool re, uh, requirements. They have different, uh, in other words, if you put in a, a BMS that's only allowed to, you know, do 100 amps and, and you put other batteries on that's 200 amps and you pull it the wrong way or the battery, 200 amp battery shuts down and the 100 amp is given to provide all the power, there could be problems. Yes, all that's absolutely true. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't deny any of that. I just don't see the issue being you can't do this because it's not safe. I see systems possibly shutting down in a case of you're not appropriately fused the right things. But those are the those are the ones, and we'll go back to that and and talk about the safety ones again. Parallel only the batteries of the same chemistry and the same number of cell count. In other words, 48 volt, 16 cell batteries made of lithium iron phosphate, no problem. This does not apply to lead acid or other battery types. I would never suggest that you do it for them. Uh, and then make sure that every single battery and bank is fused. And I don't see a problem. Put it in the comments down below what you do. 
I want to hear about it. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, you probably could give me a like if you like the content that you saw. If you want to see more, we're still in battery week or battery weeks. There's going to be more videos. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.